too long, brother. But before you leave, we gotta do a pop quiz. So out of everything we told you, what's three things you remember? Say it. I said I'm an Israelite. Say it again. I said I'm an Israelite. Say it with your chest, brother. They can't I'm an Israelite. Right. That's right. What's two more? The seventh day is the day of rest. Yep, it's the Sabbath day. The seventh day of rest. And what can you eat? But what should you eat, bro? Nothing that don't fill to the water. Or yeah, you, you want to eat uh, things that come out of the water that got fins and scales. So that's a lot of different fish, like this thing, man. You want a Bible, man, brother? You want one? Let's get a brother one, man. <laughs> and we out here every uh, every Saturday. We out here about four to around eight, usually. Say so, something. Say, I want you to start reading, brother. And if you got any questions, you can hit us up on IG. You can uh, hit us up through email. Or even you just come out here next Saturday, brother. We gonna be right down here. It says you got. Let go. Bridges on check. Step at pan check. ZZ's on check. Hair up on check. Man, I'm ready for that wicked. Y'all can get checked. I'm on my way to camp, so go and get checked. Bridges on check. Step at pan check. ZZ's on check. Hair up on check. Man, I'm ready for that wicked. Y'all can get checked. I'm on my way to camp, so go and get checked. I'm in the spirit, please stop messing with my zone. Got a thirsty to fail, man. Cause our people are drunk with the wine of Babylon, man. They ain't drinking no kosher wine. They drinking Bud Light, Coors Light, damn Henny. Babylonian Sinnesy, man. Yeah, that, that, that Babylonian Sinnesy, man. Madness, <laughs> bring it up. That's the book of Colossians chapter three and verse number five. And it reads, Mortify therefore your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, uh, what? Fornication. Fornication. Uh -huh. Uncleanness. What is it? And uncleanness. Uh-huh. Inordinate affection. Mm -hmm. Evil concupiscence. Mm -hmm. And covetousness, which is idolatry. So that's all the things our people love, man. Idolatry. All these things are, are, are bottom line, that's all covetous, man. It's all idolatry. Following the ways of the world is idolatry. Putting everything above the Lord, man. Huh. Keep going. He said, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on right. the children of disobedience. I said, the Lord gonna kill off the people for being disobedient, man. But two thirds of the people gotta go. What's going on, sisters? Y'all know what we out here talking about today? You ever heard of the Israelites? You familiar with the Bible at all? Like some of the old stories? What you know out of it? What you know out of the Bible? You know, you familiar with prophecy? Gotcha. I say, I want to bring you out one major prophecy and I want to see if it lines up with so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Bring uh, 28 CC. Deuteronomy. Let's look at Deuteronomy 28 and verse number 68. Bring it out! And it reads, and the Lord shall bring thee into it's like it. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. You familiar with the Israelites being in Egypt before? When they were over their slaves, they were building up the pyramids and everything like that. So this is a prophecy that's after that time. He said that the Israelites were going to Egypt again. Because when they were in that first Egypt, Moses uh split the Red Sea and they were able to just walk right out right out of the land. And when he when they got done walking across, the water came by and it swooped up all the people that were pursuing them. Go That's ahead. Right. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With what? With ships. How did the black people get here? With, with ships. ships. Uh -huh. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. I said that verse is saying that we wouldn't see Egypt again. And I was saying that we just walked out of Egypt. So this is a, a spiritual Egypt that we talking about this time. Finish that up. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women. Now what happened to so-called black people when we were brought here to America? As soon as we came off the boat, what happened? I said we were sold. They were bidding on us. So, so we got sold off to another nation of people. Finish that up. So I, and there you shall be sold 
and no man shall buy you. And he said that after we were sold, nobody would be able to redeem us out of this captivity. So even though we've had Marcus Garvey, we've had Martin Luther King, and we've had uh, we've had uh, Harriet Tubman, we've had Obama, all these people haven't done anything to get the so-called black Hispanics and Native Americans out of the conditions that they in. Bring it up. The song of the 62, chapter of uh, 1, verses 6 through 9. For we have sinned and committed iniquity, departing from thee. So, so this book is going into why that happened. Because it's like we ended up on slavery, but we all know that these other nations, they're not stronger than us. They're not more talented than us. They're not better than us in any way. We ended up in this way because of, we turned our backs on the Lord. In all things have we trespassed and not obey thy commandments. And then what? And not obey thy commandments. What's the reason we in slavery? And not obey thy commandments, huh? nor kept them, neither done as thou hast commanded us, that it might go well with us. Wherefore, all that thou hast brought upon us and everything that thou hast done to us, thou hast done in true judgment. Uh -huh. And thou didst deliver us into the hands of lawless enemies. So what are the so-called white people? Lawless, lawless enemies. enemies. What is this man and this woman walking down the street? Lawless, lawless enemies. enemies. Uh -huh. Most hateful forsakers of God. What are they? Most, Most hateful, hateful forsakers of God. What are those sisters that don't want to hear the words? They just walk off while the, while the precepts are coming out? Most hateful forsakers of God. And to an unjust king, and the most wicked in all the earth. I said, so they want to cleave on to the ways of this world, man, and they're going to have to go out with the oppressor, man. We see this day in and day out, man. There's no new thing under the sun. We see this every week, every weekend when we out here. We see this every day at the workplace. We see it on social media. We see it on TV. Our people love trying to be like these other nations, man. They don't want to hear the words of the Lord. And therefore, they're going to get destroyed, man. So it's going to keep leaning on that big-ass cross in there, and the Lord going to burn that thing up like it's a real piece of wood. Go ahead. Salaki. <laughs> Salaki. It's the book of Ecclesiastes. Salaki. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 9 and verse 11. Read out! Envy not the glory of a sinner. Do what? Envy not the glory of a sinner. What do our people need to do? Envy not, not the glory, glory of a sinner. sinner. So stop envying the glory of these damn sinners, man. Trying to dress like these other people. I sisters don't never want to wear a dress. Rather walk around with their cheeks out. Want to walk around with dyed hair looking like Oompa Loompas and damn McDonald's characters, man. Looking like damn hamburger and, and grimace. Man, it's <laughs> bring it up. Like this is the. This uh, this Sirach chapter nine and verse eleven. <laughs> Envy not the glory of a sinner, for thou knowest not what shall be his end. I say, because our people don't know what the end of these people are gonna be, man. They don't realize what's really coming to this world, man. Verse twelve. Verse twelve. Delight not in the thing that the ungodly have pleasure in. But right, hold on, we gonna have to start that verse from the top. What's going on, brother? What's going on, man? Y'all just came for the game? Yes, sir. How was it? It's good. We won. Used oh, yeah? To go, used to go to North. Hey, it was, was that something that was prophesied? Did you know that we was going to win the, the Blues game today? No, I was going to Hey, brother, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to ask you a couple questions right quick, man. We We're doing the live podcast right now. We got to get somewhere. I'm sorry. Hey, brother, you might be famous off of this thing, man. I hope y'all make it up. Hey, bring that out again, man. We hope you make it. This a, I hope you make it, man. This is a book. This is a book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter nine and verse eleven. Envy not the glory of a sinner. What does the people gotta do? That's walking hand to hand with their oppressor. Envy not, not the glory of a sinner. Going to blues game on the Sabbath. Envy not, not the glory of a sinner. sinner. Walking around with damn snakes in your ear, man, listening to the serpent. Oh. <laughs> Envy not the glory of a sinner, for thou knowest not what shall be his end. Say, man, these people don't know what their end is going to be. What's going on, sisters? Y'all know what y'all nationality would be? What, what do y'all call yourself? Like, if you fill out an application, what box would you check on it? Is it, is it anything that's on there? Say, all on this side would be what we get called nowadays. 
as far as people. These over here is what the Lord would call these same groups of people. You know, wait, you see it, you say you asked her. What's your sister? Right, see that? So we got two Israelites up here, man. Give them a hand. Give them a round of applause. It's like if y'all y'all stand a chance to be saved from what's to come on this earth, man. Uh. Because did you know that the Lord has a chosen people? Have you ever heard that before? Your pastor ever tell you, hey, you you royalty. They ever tell you the reason why our people love calling each other kings and queens, why we love calling ourselves gods? It's because of the Lord has a chosen people. Give me a Joel 2 and 27. And give me a Deuteronomy 7 and 6. It's the book of Joel. I need another reader. Give me 1 Peter uh, 2 and 9. You know, this is the book of Joel, chapter 2 and verse number 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I said, the Lord said that he is in the midst of Israel. Israel would be one of our forefathers. He come from the, the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Go ahead. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And that term, your, is a possessive. It's a possessive term. Like, that's your bag. I can't walk up at this grand bag now walking up and down the street with it like, like yeah, y'all see my new bag? Like, that's yours. So the, so the Lord said that, we, that he is the Lord, our God. Check the fly out system. Subscribe to the YouTube. And we got Instagram on there too. So when you get to reading and watching videos and you don't understand anything, you can hit us up. Yeah. Man, uh, what happened to put it to Joe? Stop bringing it up. The book of Joe, chapter 21, verse 27. Behold, I know your thoughts. So what the Lord say? Behold, I know your thoughts and the devices which ye wrongfully imagine against me. For ye say, where is the house of the prince? Say, where is what? For ye say, where is the house of the prince? Our people are like, man, how we keeping feast days? So we don't know the, we don't, we don't even have a temple. And what's going on, brothers? For ye say, where is the house of the prince? And where are the dwelling places of the wicked? Have ye not asked them that go by the way? And do ye not know their tokens? That the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction? What did the Lord say? That the, that the wicked, wicked is reserved to the day of destruction? One of these other nations? That the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction? Say, the Lord has reserved these heathens until the day of destruction, man. But our people are gonna get caught up in that thing, man. If they don't repent, start keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. Good morning. They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. They shall what? They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. They don't want, they don't really want to see that day, man. That's why as soon as the words start coming out, it start getting too deep. They're like, hey man, I gotta go. They rather keep hearing falsehood, man, than hear these actual words of the Lord. Because they know if they hearing these words of the Lord that they gotta be held accountable. It ain't it ain't no more, you just do whatever you want. Go ahead. This is the book of Sarat, chapter 41, and verse number 10. All that are of the earth shall turn to earth again. So what the Lord say? All that are of the earth shall turn to earth again. Right. Say, so you're not gonna take none of the things that you have with you when you die. Your body is going back to the ground, man. And like Ashar always say, that he ain't never seen a, a U-Haul behind the hearse, man. You can't take this stuff with you, man. The car, the house, the clothes, all the jewelry, all the food you got stored up, man. So making a bunker means nothing. You are, you gonna return back to the dirt, man. That's right. And your spirit's gonna go back up to the Mosiah. That's and right. You gonna get judged for all the wickedness you did, man. The Lord gonna open that big book of life, and He gonna pull out that moment when He go, "Hey, you had to you had a chance to hear the words of the Lord, but you walked away." You go ahead. It says, "All that are of the earth shall turn to earth again. Uh -huh. So the ungodly shall go from a curse to destruction." Say, what's gonna happen with this, brother? So the ungodly shall go from a curse to destruction. destruction. Get. Man, you gotta separate from the enemy, brother. You can't keep walking hand in hand with your oppressor, man. Ooh. Bring that up. This is the book of Jeremiah to the 15 and verse number two in the GNT. And it reads, when they ask you where they should go, tell them that I have said, some are doomed. Say what? Some, some are doomed. What are the uh, two thirds of Israelites? Some, some are, are doomed. doomed. Huh? To die by disease. By what? By disease. 
What is uh? Man, I don't even. What's the the C19? By disease. By the different strains that come up every couple months. By disease. By gout. Disease. Heart attacks. Disease. High blood pressure. Disease. Uh -huh. That's where they will go. So that's where they gonna go, man. Go ahead. Others are doomed to die in war. He said, so the same way some are set up just to die throughout all the diseases and the pestilence that's coming on the earth, man. When you see people just walk around and rubbing their nose and just, just coughing, not covering themselves up, man. I and mean, nobody using Germex. Nobody using Lysol, man. When you walk in the bathroom, just think, man. Say, so them other people gonna be left for what? For disease. Uh, Slacky. Others are doomed. Slacky, I was slacky. I, I was thinking about that uh that, that flesh eating bacteria they got out now, man. God. That that Zechariah uh that Zechariah uh twelve, man. Yeah. Their eyes gonna be be decaying in their sockets, man. Their skin is gonna be melting off. Yeah, huh. Slacky. Hey sister, you got two minutes of the work? See that? It's lucky, man. That's off. <laughs> Looking like an overweight cheater. That's <laughs> off, man. That's bad. This, this, this the book of Jeremiah oh, this, Lord. chapter 15 and verse number two. Oh Lord. This is me off, man. <laughs> it said, when they ask you where they should go, tell them oh. that I have said some are doomed to die oh, by disease. Oh, I said that sister might die by disease. Cause she walking around with her yams out, and I bet you all kinds of random planes have landed on that runway, man. Go ahead. Damn, that's off. That's off, man. <laughs> that is off. <laughs> I gotta stop for That is off, man. That is off, man. This is the book of Jeremiah to the 15th and verse 2. When they ask you where they should go. Tell them that I have said some are doomed to die by disease, others are doomed to die in war. I said a lot of other people gonna, gonna get consumed by war. They already consumed in the game violence. You already see what happened with damn uh with uh Mo3. You already see what happened with uh with uh young golf. What's up? Five minutes. Oh god. I said you already see what's happening with all these other words. What's the what's the uh the one dude from Migos? Uh oh, take off. Take, take off time. Off. See that? Took his ass off. Yeah, Lord took his ass off, man. <laughs> off the earth. Say, because he wanted to do what? Be caught up in the ways of the world, man. Take off. Said the brother was uh was, was brought out the precept earlier when he was talking about the uh the heathens was casting lots for our people. When you read it in the GNT, it said they was rolling the dice, man. They was gambling on the so-called black suspenders and Native Americans, man. And what our people they love doing what? Shooting that dice now, man. And now brothers what? Getting getting shot. Over a damn game, man. So our people rolling snake eyes, man. And when you roll snake eyes, what happened? You lose, brother. Go ahead. You grabbed out. He said, he said they are doomed. You grabbed out. So like, he said others are doomed to die in war. I said, then, then we got World War Three on the rise, man. That Matthew 24 is coming to life. You are rumors of wars, man. You got everybody loading up missiles, aiming it at this place, man. Right. Putin just launched the, uh, the Satan 2 missile. What do you think about your people making missiles for this place, man? Because this place is over with. This place is not going to always last. No, it's not. So Psalm 49 11 say your people think that, that this place is going to last forever, man. But it's not. The rude awakening is coming, man. That's why y'all shelves is empty. That's why your government is, is falling apart, man. Arguing with each other, everybody beefing, countries can't get along, the dollar is dropping, all the stores are shutting down because what, the pencil is building back up again? And all praises to the most high, man. We rejoicing over these things. Bring that up. The others are going to die in war. That's where they will go. That's where what? That's where they will go. What did the Lord say? That's where they will go. Uh -huh. Some are doomed to die of starvation. Right. That's where they will go. Right. Others are doomed to be taken away as prisoners. As what? As prisoners. I said a lot of our people, they gonna be uh, they gonna be in them damn concentration camps, man. Our people already locked up in the prison system. Ain't nowhere to go. Ain't no hope for our people. What's going on, brother? What you doing today, man? What you doing? See, brother, keep them, man. Give me that, uh, give me that Genesis 49 too, man. So you know that that's, that saying that's on your hoodie is, is a scripture? 
You know that's coming from the Lord, man. You know who the Lord is talking to in, in the Bible? Because the, cause the most like God, he has a chosen people. It's not what we've always heard in church when just God love everybody. Salvation is going to be for everybody. God is talking to a specific people. Give me uh, the Isaiah 44. God, God. Uh, 49, uh, 15, 15. So, because the Lord has the chosen people, give me Deuteronomy uh, 76, verse 15. I'm actually bringing that one out first. Because I need you to hear, you probably ain't never heard this stuff before. You probably never heard you was royalty. You probably never heard you were a king upon the earth. Bring that out. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, and verse number 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord. Saying that word holy means set apart. So we different than everybody else. Don't you think that the so-called black man has more rhythm than everybody else? Can't nobody else dance like us. No matter how much the Jabberwockies want to cover their face up and start break dancing, they ain't, they ain't got nothing on us, man. I said there is no uh there is no uh no no Chinese LeBron. I said there is no uh Arabian uh Tiger Woods. I said show me the uh Show me the uh, the Japanese damn uh, Sakari Richards, man. Show me where somebody else is, is breaking records like the so-called black people are. Bring that out. Deuteronomy 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people. To be what? To be a special people unto himself. Unto who? Unto himself. Say so the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans they are a special people to the Lord. They're not like everybody else. Go ahead. Above all people. No, we below them. Above all people. But we've been fighting for equal rights for so long. Above all people. We march in the street yelling, Black Lives Matter. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So the Lord said that the Israelites would be above all people upon the face of the earth. I can say you're an Israelite all day long, but how would you know you're an Israelite? Do you feel like you're an Israelite, brother? You feel like you might be a chosen person? I'll tell you what, I, I can bring out a prophecy that you can guarantee lines up with the so-called black man. Like how do we get here to America? Did we come here in, in the Dodge Avenger? Did we come here, uh, did we come to, uh, through Lambert Airport? We fly Southwest, we got a bag check. We came here and hop on the Metrolink and now we downtown. Is, it, is that right here? No, it's, it's this. Turn that around for the brother. So this is how we came to so-called America, brother. This is how the so-called Hispanics and Native Americans, this is how they came here before we did. Because they told us our history is what? We were slaves starting in 1619. What about the Hispanics back in 1492, man? When they came here by the way of ship. That's actually in the Bible as well. Bring it up. Deuteronomy. It's the book of Deuteronomy to the 28th. In verse number 68, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With what? With, with ships. ships. With what? With ships. By plane. With ships. By car. With ships. By a scooter. With ships. Uh -huh. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. So a little backstory. You familiar with uh with the Israelites being in Egypt when they were slaves of Pharaoh? So that's when they're building up the pyramids and stuff. So Moses actually led the Israelites out of Egypt when he split them, split the Red Sea, and they was able to just walk right across. And so why would why would uh, Moses have to say, "Let my people go" so they can get up out of Egypt? So because uh, you need to do the uh, five letter. I'm listening while I walk. I ain't got no time, but I can hear you preach. Don't waste. You need time. five minutes, sister. Five minutes, and I guarantee you, you will not call yourself a black woman by the it's time the you leave. It's the book of Judah, chapter 5, and verse 11. Now. And it reads, Therefore the king of Egypt rose up against them and dealt subtly with them, uh -huh. and brought them low with laboring and in brick. Say the, the king, he brought them low. He brought them in a, in a, in a real low mindset. You might hear it now, like when somebody said they might call themselves down. They down in the dumps. They down on their luck. You know, they on hard times. That's what they're talking about. Go ahead. And made them slaves. And did what? And made them slaves. Uh-huh. 
That was it. That was it. Yeah. I said, and that's because they were slaves. That's the reason that Moses had to say, let my people go. That's why they had to get out of Egypt. Now go back to 68. It's Deuteronomy 28 68 from the top. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Uh huh. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. So he told them that they would get out of the physical Egypt. So that's how you know that now he's saying that they would be going into a spiritual Egypt. I'm gonna bring that up. The book of Exodus chapter 13, verse three. And Moses said unto the people, remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt. Out of where? Out of the house of bondage. Out of what? Out of the house of bondage. So bondage is another word for slavery. So, so he had to get them out of slavery. That's why he had to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. So when the Lord said that they'd be coming out of Egypt again and going by ships, that shows that them people, that they weren't going out of the physical land. This time they're going into a spiritual uh, slavery. Go ahead. It's a precept. This is the book of Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Now, wouldn't you agree that our people are the only ones that's being found dead in the streets all the time? Give me that, uh, that the George Floyd on this one. Yeah. Yeah. See, didn't that just happen just a couple years ago? I said, then you got our people getting killed by the police on a, on a daily basis. It's all the time we turn, and our people are turning up missing. I was like, you got the, uh, what they call it, the pizza gate, where all these people are just being uh, being found missing. You got, uh, what's that, uh, what's that, Wafer? I was like, it was a couple years ago, oh, there was yeah. this company that was selling stuff online, and they were actually got caught up in the, uh, in the damn transport business of, of kidnapping children and selling them in what appeared to be just storage containers. Yeah, you buy a dresser for 10000 it's really a kid. Yeah, but it's really a child in there. You see that? <laughs> got human mannequins. They, they stuff their bodies the same way that the creeps be doing the animals when they put them on shelves and stuff. Right? Bring that on uh, 68. I'm going to hold you up too long. This Deuteronomy 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou uh -huh. shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. I said, so when we came to America, we were sold off to our enemies. Like when you look at the courthouse right there, over there, back, right around, right down the street from the uh, the Bush Stadium, said so that old courthouse, that's where our people was getting sold. We were brought in on the riverfront and we were being sold right there. Is what? For bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. I said, so we were sold as being slave men and slave women. So we had little children had to pick cotton. Had to pick tobacco, pick sugar cane, all kinds of all kinds of uh, brutal things. We're in slavery. We just like it was in Judas five and eleven. Say we we're brought low with labor and a brick. We built up everything that you see around here. We came up with. Even to this day, we make every uh, every every invention is from a so-called black person. Even if you look it up and you see that somebody else came with came up with it, it's because they had the money to make it patent which means they were able to, to get the money to put that item into production. Like you uh, you use Instagram or like TikTok or anything, that stuff is ran off what's called an algorithm. And that algorithm was even created by a so-called black man. So you wouldn't even you wouldn't even have a computer if it wasn't for a black man. Made the first, George Washington Carver made the uh, first computer out of a peanut. I'm like that's how smart our people are. We made everything. We made the traffic light, refrigerator, light bulbs, Everything you can think of is by our people, man. So, so that's just one of the few prophecies that just line up with our people to show that we would have to fit who the Israelites are. Would you agree? I said, so now if you go home and, and somebody asks you, who are you? You're going to say that you're what? You ain't going to say you're a black man, you're what? A what? Say so you be an Israelite. Yep. Say so give me a Deuteronomy 29 and 1. This Deuteronomy to the 29 and verse number 1. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab beside the covenant which he made with them in Horan. So bring that out one time. Just the time. This is the book of Deuteronomy 29 and verse 1. These are the words of the covenant 
which the Lord made with Moses to make with the children of Israel. So he was speaking to the children of Israel. So you wouldn't be a so-called black man. You, you wouldn't be a so-called African-American because Africa and America are the names of two so-called white men. So those are just land masses that they've conquered. Turn that around for the brother so he can see it. So America was, was formed by Amerigo Vespucci and Africa was from Leo Scipio Africanus. One was an Italian map maker and the other one was just a Roman general. So he happened to win the war. He just conquered some people. And now they lame these lands, Africa and America, after other people. African American has been a term that was coined just in the 80s. So it's like our, our grandmothers, they didn't call themselves uh, yeah, African American. So they didn't, they was called Negroes, they called colors, they been called everything else other than, other than what they were. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 37. That's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse number 37, right? Huh. And thou shall become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether Yahweh shall lead thee. So, so the Lord said one of the curses that he put on his people is that we be called by other names. We be called different proverbs and bywords. Now to the point we don't even like calling ourselves black now. Our people just say that they a nigger. Just call themselves Negro, call themselves blacks, African Americans, Afro Americans, everything else other than what the Lord called them. I'm going to bring out another curse that happened to our people. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land. To do what? To serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. So, so the Lord said that he was, uh, that his people, they would lose their identity. So that's why we lost everything in slavery. We lost our uh, our language. We lost uh, the customs as far as food that we ate, as far as the clothes that we wear. So you have you have any idea what we did before before these days? Like before we was wearing skinny jeans and and hoodies and and sneakers. Say, so, uh, give me a uh, numbers fifteen thirty eight. So I'm gonna show you how our people was walking around. The book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 38. You got it. Yeah. Speak unto the children of Israel yeah. <laughs> and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. Uh -huh. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. Now you know what fringes are? So fringes would be what you see at the bottom of brother's shirts. So fringes come in all kinds of colors. Brother got the multicolored, shark got black, today got them gold. Why I got on got on the multicolored? Yaquile got on silver. Said so fringes come in all colors, but but what's the one thing that's specific about the fringes? And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. Are you familiar with any commandments, brother? So that's actually one of them. That's what you just learned a new commandment today, man. What did, what did this precept go into? So this is the first commandment you learned. I want to see if you can remember it. So the Lord said that we have to wear fringes. Say so then these fringes are what's going to help you. It's going to be your physical reminder so you remember to keep all the other commandments. I'm going to bring out, can I give you two more commandments before you go? All right, give me a uh, Exodus 20 and 8. Exodus 20 and 8. Okay. Uh, uh. Give me a, give me it's the book of, it's the book of Exodus chapter 20. And verse number eight, remember the Sabbath day. This is the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse eight. Remember the Sabbath day. So you familiar with what the Sabbath day is? So the Sabbath day is a day of worship. So it's the day, it's the one day that you set apart from every other day of the week. Go ahead. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor. So the Lord said that we got six days to do all of our labor. That's if you got a job. That's if you uh, you got to do dishes. You know, whether it's, it's, it's cutting the grass. You know, anything that your parents say you do, taking the trash out. You got six days to do all those things. But what's special about that seventh day? Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So the seventh day of the week would be the Sabbath. You familiar with what the seventh day of the week is? 
Like you look at a calendar, what's the seventh day of the week? Said it'd be Saturday. Say. See, so when you look at it, like see Sunday, that's the first day of the week. That would have been the, the 17th. We are now at the 23rd. That's the seventh day of the week. So, so the Lord said that it's the seventh day. What are we supposed to be doing on the seventh? He said, but the seventh day, so like, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Say it what? every Saturday. to do all your work. That seventh day is a day of rest. That is the one day you don't do any work during. Say so anybody in your house. So whether it's, it's your brother, your sister, even your parents, you'd be like, hey man, it's the seventh. I can't, I can't do nothing. Your, your dad ain't gonna tell you, hey, take that trash out. You'd be like, hey, I gotta do that tomorrow. I, today is the seventh day. It's my day of rest. So that's that's two laws you didn't learn today. Bring that one up. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 8. And the swine. And the what? And the swine. You familiar with what swine is? Swine would be pork. You like pork? You like pepperoni? Sausage? So you be getting some uh, polo sausage? Some ribs? Yeah. I said, we're going to see what the Lord said about that. And the swine, because it divided the hoof, yet chew it not the cud, it is unclean unto you. So, so the Lord said the pig would be unclean. You have any idea why it would be unclean? Well, the, the one of the things about pigs, one well, of the main thing is that they put on farms to actually clean up all the slop. So a pig will eat anything, and everything that that pig eats, you're actually eating. Because pigs don't have sweat glands. They don't release any of those toxins that they build up inside their body from the things that they eat. So that's why they're put on the farm. The pig is one of the, the well, it is the filthiest animal just walking on land. I was like, so the Lord said that that thing would be unclean to you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, nor touch their dead corpus. So you don't want to eat that thing. You don't even want to touch it. Because everything that, that a, a pig has inside it, like I was saying, you congesting it, and you putting it inside your body now. Go ahead. These ye shall eat of all that are in the waters. So, so what do you like to eat out of waters? You, you like any fish or anything? Oh. Say what? I'm going to just give you just a little bit of knowledge just on the law. Say so there are certain certain things out of the water we can eat. Certain things out of the water we shouldn't eat. Like a couple of things that our people love to eat is like crab, like lobster, you eat any of that, shrimp. All praises to the most high, brother. That's a good thing, but I ain't even got to bring out the rest of the verse in. Because that, that verse is telling you not to eat those things that don't have fins or scales. Because those are the things that can filter the ocean. The same way the pea cleans up all the slop on the on the land, the shrimp, crab, lobster, oysters, mussels, the clams. Yeah. It fills out the water. They uh, they uh, they they clean in all the all the the stuff in the water, man. Like all the things that the all the trash that be in the water, all the poop that come from the other fish. That's all the things that those things eat. So you don't want to eat those, brother. So those are just a couple of laws. I ain't gonna give you too many. But I want to tell you why we got to keep them laws. Give me that. Uh, Ecclesi Ecclesiastes 12, 13. It's the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the whole conclusion. It's like it. This is Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So this is the conclusion of the whole matter. So everything that we didn't told you in this few minutes you've been up here is for a reason. Go ahead. Fear God and keep his commandments. See what? Fear God and, and keep, keep his commandments. What's this brother got to do? Fear, Fear God, God and keep his commandments. Uh -huh. for, for this is the whole for duty, duty of, of man. man. So, so that's the whole reason that we upon the earth. It's to free the most God, the most high God and keep his commandments. What's going on? Just read 14. Oh, come on, come on. Yeah, bring that up. For God, for God shall bring every work into judgment. Say so we got to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments because God is going to bring all of our works into judgment. So you probably heard that the uh, the the end of the world, 
you know, with the, we living in the last days, that day of judgment, you know, there's gonna come a day where everything that we see isn't gonna be here anymore. Say so Christ is gonna come back and, and redeem his people, which would be the Israelites. Say, so, but he gonna redeem those Israelites that are keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. That's why we've been hearkening on those so much. He gonna bring every work into judgment in that day. So when the Lord come back, he gonna pull out that book and he gonna have every single thing that you've ever done written down, whether those works be good or bad. Go ahead. So long. Ecclesiastes 12 and 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. See? So whether those actions are good or whether they're evil, then, you, Man, then those things gonna be brought up, uh, gonna be brought to light. So you're gonna know every work that you did. But I ain't gonna hold you too long, brother. But before you leave, we gotta do a pop quiz. So out of everything we told you, what's three things you remember? See what? See? I said I'm an Israelite. Say it again. I said I'm an Israelite. Say it with your chest, brother. They I'm an Israelite. Right. That's right. What's two more? The seventh day is the day of rest. Yep, it's the Sabbath day. The seventh day of rest. And what can you eat? But what should you eat, bro? Nothing that don't fill to the water. Or yeah, you, you want to eat uh, things that come out of the water that got fins and scales. So that's a lot of different fish, like flounder, uh, whether it be cod, they got uh, red snapper. It, it's a yeah, it's a lot of fish that you can eat. You got trout. Like, like you say, you got salmon, salmon, depending on how you say it. Salmon. <laughs> I said, but there's a lot, lot more cleaner fish that you can eat. And it's just, we try to save you things that's not gonna kill you, brother. Because even when you get older, uh, when you start going to the doctor a lot, a lot of our like aunts and stuff, they going through having high blood pressure, having diabetes, having gout, it's because they've been eating these foods that the Lord told them not to eat. Like most of the time when people have diabetes and high blood pressure, the first thing doctors say is you gotta stop eating all that pork. And it's, yeah, it's like because they got tapeworms in them. They got, uh, what's that uh, What's that other worm that's inside it? That one that you can't kill, forget the name of it. Yeah, it's a, it's a worm that's inside pork that you can't even kill. So it's like they've done tests. You can look these things up on YouTube. Like the, uh, when they pour certain things on, on, uh, on pork. Yeah, when they pour Coca-Cola on it, all them bugs and, and stuff start coming out of it. You gotta think you eating that stuff. So it's like all that stuff you're putting inside of you, that's what's actually killing our people off. Say, so, but the Lord said that we gotta keep these commandments in them last days. You got any questions before you leave, brother? God, I don't wanna hold you up. What's your name, man? Darnell. Nice to meet you, Darnell. I'm Ezra here. So we, uh, on that flyer, we do got a YouTube. So go ahead and subscribe on there. We got hundreds of videos. You can get on there and get some knowledge, wisdom, and understanding off of there. And then that other big sheet that the brother gave you, those are some of the simple laws that we was telling you about. So you can you can look into those. You know, see some of the some of the things that we can start keeping on a daily basis is gonna help our people. I said, and then you can you can go take this information back to your parents, take it back to your cousins, to your friends. You know, get into this thing, man. You own a Bible, man, brother. You want one? Let's get a brother one, man. <laughs> And we out here every uh, every Saturday. We out here about four to around eight usually. So, so, so I want you to start reading, brother. And if you got any questions, you can hit us up on IG. You can uh, hit us up through email, or even you just come out here next Saturday, brother. We gonna be right down here. So, so you got, yep. Say so bring your family, bring your friends with you, man. Thanks. So remember, we Israelites gotta keep the commandments in these last days. All right. All right, brother. Sip, stay diligent. The most I build in this army, so now we militant. Your howl is shy, coming like a thief in the night. Gotta stay woke, gotta watch vigilant.